morning, everyone. I'm Kim Sinlin. I'm with my partner in crime, Joe Flores um, from Keller Williams Plano. And um, this is our Command Boot Camp um, 101 zip forms um, with DocuSign in command. So um, I'm going to go ahead. Um, Joe, do you want to add anything? No, not at all. Let's, let's get started. Screen. Okay. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, log into my Netris account. Once you've logged into your Nutris account, you'll see all these icons. If you go down here, so this is your homepage, Collin County Association of Realtors. If you go down here, um, just over here, you'll see zip form, okay? Press the button to zip forms, and this will take you directly to zip forms plus, which is what we're going to be working in today. And then we'll show you how to link this into DocuSign within command. All right, so uh, zip forms is zip logic. And look, if you look right here in the top right hand corner, you'll see login zip form plus. Click zip forms, click that button. Sorry, computer's very slow today. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Um, one thing, Joe, why don't you talk about this? So this is our zip forms um, login page. Um, but t talk to them. You wanted to talk to them a little bit about this. Yes, the, the reason we're showing you this is because we want to make sure that you know how to get your username, okay? If you do not know your username, you click on forgot username, okay, and it will be emailed to you. You need to make sure that you write it down. Mm -hmm. it, is not, it is not the lock of the email that you normally use to sign in. Yes. That so is it, is a, it is your name and, whole, and a set of six, seven numbers. Yes. And if you did that, if you did that, you probably don't know your, your, your password either. So you get, you, you click forgot password, and then that password is going to be emailed to you as well. Okay. You need to make sure that you keep those two, the username and the forgot password readily available because eventually when we get to the command opportunity piece, you're going to need that information to link your command opportunity with SIV forms. Okay. Yeah. Now, what we want to show you is that you, you can access SIF forms from your homepage in Netris. You want to go to your homepage, Kim? Yeah, that's what I just did. That's no, no, go to your, no, no, go to your homepage in, in Netris. Exit like this. Oh, here? Hit, hit, the, hit that one. Uh -huh. So you can get to it from both places. The place that I showed you, you can yeah. also go to it right here in external links. Uh, it's right, zip form right here. Yep. Click. Right through there. Yeah. Okay. The reason, the reason that we show you this other one is just so that you can see how you can get your username and your password. But you do not have to access zip forms through here. Use okay. this just to get your username and your password. It's a lot easier to access it from the home page, just like Kim showed you on Matrix. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click sign in, but as you can see, it's got my number, my name, and then the numbers. This one, we've had some people try to log in with the, with this, with the blue bar, the NAR.realtor. I think people have had, not had as much success with that. Remember, right. you are not paying for this service. Well, you're paying for this service. It's through CCAR. So it is, you, you already have it. There's you will not be starting a new account, okay? Okay, Kim, go to Matrix and go to the external links okay. and press it that way. Okay. 
There you are. So it's going to pop right in. Sorry, the pokey internet. Always, right? Especially yeah. if you need it. Okay, so now we're in Zip Forms Plus. And I want you to see this bar up here. You have dashboard, transactions, templates, and all these other options. Um, we tend to work in dashboards, transactions, and templates. Um, the nice. first, yep. Um, the first thing we're going to do um, is click on templates. Okay. Now, as you can see, I have several templates in here. Joe and I are going to show you how to set up um, a buyer template. Now, once you set up a buyer template, your seller template and any lease template you set up, it's going to be the exact same um, procedure. It's just going to, your documents may vary from um, piece to piece. Okay. Um, okay. So you click, so we're in templates. Okay, you're going to go ahead and click new. And we're going to do um, a buyer template because it's, it's a lot easier. So you have new <coughs> offer. All right. Now, normally what you will do for this um, in this section is put where it says enter template name. You will typically put the address um, and... Okay. Yeah. Kim, I think I think that you would typically what's suggested is that you put your buyer's last name there because you because when you have a buyer you really don't know the address of the house that they're going to be actually purchasing. Correct, but you have to for compliance for command compliance you have to go back in and put in the address as well. So you're obvious you're going to start with their name. In this case, we're just calling it buyer template. We're going to do residential. Um, and then you can um, click automatically apply this to purchase residential new transactions. Okay. So then you're going to click save. All right. So now, okay. So now it is taking me, it took me right into this template. Click. One thing I want you to double check on, click back to list in the left hand corner here and look here is buyer template one. So this is the template that we're going to be working with. So you click back into it. Okay. And Joe, I'm going to move us down here. <laughs> what you're going to need to do is click on um, all forms and you just click this arrow. All right. And then you'll see the list. This is all of the forms. Okay. You want to up here, you want to make sure it says form libraries. Mine pretty much stays on Texas Realtors, but you can click all, Netris, Trek, if you know what you're looking for. Remember, all of these, they all, they're, many of them are the same document. They just may have different numbers within each of these categories. Okay. So click on Texas Realtors because that's what we are. So for um, the first template we're going to need is the um, residential, residential buyers rep agreement. Okay, uh, residential. And it takes a little bit of finagling to pop up. Uh, okay. Residential, uh, okay. Why is it not popping up? I uh, don't know. Pop in buyer's rep agreement. It usually pops up pretty quick. There it is, residential buyer tenant rep agreement. Okay, you gotta be, um, so click on it and then it'll pop right on over. It'll feed right into that template. And, and then do the do the IABS. X this out, and then we'll do the um, information about brokerage services. So you click, 
and it'll come right over. You can, you'll need, um, there, you'll need third party financing, you'll need a one to four contract. And then, um, Joe, let me go ahead and show them how to upload a document from the computer. Yes. So, to upload a document from the computer, okay, you're going to click Add Document. Okay, I have my items in Dropbox, so I'm going to click Dropbox. So I'm going to click on Business. And then I have a folder called Keller Williams Plano Specific. Um, and then Keller William Transactions Forms. And then I'm going to click on the Keller Williams ABA um, and click, you just click on whatever um, form you need and hit add. Oh, now it's saying I can't add that. Okay, well, that's how you do it. Not sure why it's not adding, but that's how you do it. So we'll move on. Um, okay, so the great thing about um, the setting up the templates is you can uh, you can fill in all this information so the next time that you pull in a buyer all of this will be filled out you won't spend be spending time doing this okay so keller williams realty plano um 049 and you can see i've put these in a few times so they're here and you just do Bob Baker and then 972-599-7000, okay? And what I do for all of these, I literally, oops, I copy and paste, okay? And same with the phone number, you would copy and paste. Here, you're gonna put Bob's name, Okay, and then his license number. Um, and then actually, see, actually, sorry, you put my group. Sorry. He's the 017. And here you put Bob. There we go. And then, okay. So you would have all of these filled in. You click save. Okay, and then click back. Um, and so when you click on this again, remember this is your template. All of that information is still there. Okay. That's hey Kim, can I add something? Sure. Yeah. Remember your template guys, you can put in as many forms as you are going to need at one point or another. So you can have the one to four, the third party, the HOA, um, the lead base. It doesn't mean that you're gonna need all of those forms in your transaction, but you have them already readily available in your template in case that you're doing a transaction in which you are gonna need one of those forms. Correct. For the most part, you can auto populate these forms with the information that you can that is going to be constant you know from one form to another so you don't have to retype it every time that you use it correct so right now for this for this uh, purpose we're only doing these two but you know Kim showed you how to get to the forms so mm -hmm. you can put all the forms that you think you may need at any given time correct so let's click on, let me click over on the residential buyer um, tenant rep agreement because this is information that you will fill in and never have to touch again. So you'll do Keller Williams Realty. Um, and then I put my name. And then you'll put uh, 3600. Preston Road, oops, I don't know why it's not doing that. Preston Road, Plano, 75093, okay? And then you can put in, I would put your phone number here and your email address here. So let's do that and then. You can put definitions. Paragraph number three, market area. You can put Collin County. 
You can put Denton County. You can put mm -hmm. Denton County. It's wherever that particular transaction is going to take you to. Yeah. And all, all, all the counties. Yeah, this is typically the three that I deal with. Uh-huh. Between Plano, Frisco. So these are the three that I come in and do. And if you, but once you have uploaded this template to the new client, then um, you can change it, no problem. You're not gonna, your term is always going to be different. Here, you would just write, and Kim Sunlin. Sorry, Keller Williams, Realty Plano. So then all you have to do is you'll type in your client's first name right here. Um, I don't know why there's a seven there, but that should be an X. <laughs> you'll always click intermediary status. That's another one that you can leave there. Commissions, um, put 3%. Or, and then here I put 50%. That's another one you leave here. Here, 120 days. Um, money always passes through Collin County because that's where the brokerage is. Um, and then you would here, what I typically put in is the wire, um, the wire transfer form, the vendor form, the ABD form, and now we have to add in your co the COVID-19 form. So that's where you would put all those. And then it makes them nice and tiny and they fit right there. So those are all, um, you know, and then here you would put in your license number. Oh no, sorry, that's the, no, that's correct. Yep. Um, okay, so again, click save. Okay. And then you'll go back and then just double click. I'm gonna click on it again and double check. <coughs> and look, all my information is still there, okay? So, okay, Joe. So again, we'll do that. You will do this for um, um, buyers, sellers, and if you have lease tenants. Okay, I want to take you back to templates real quick. I want to show you one quick thing. Um, Tommy Thompson in our office gave me this super awesome idea. I made a template, um, and within it, I put. Um, Chicago, I put Chicago title as the um, title company, okay? But what I want to do is I want to, um, instead of having to change the, the title company each time in my template, what Tommy told me to do was make a copy of whatever template you have. So you make a copy, um, click save, and then what you do is you come in here and change it. Okay, you come in here, rename this one Republic Title. I made a copy, okay? So it should pop back up right here, okay? So then I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna click on the transaction, the family contract, okay? And do you see right here where it says Chicago Title? Well, all I have to do here is change this to Republic Title. And you change the you can go in change the information, um, so you would have that in your template as well. So just a quick note, a sidebar note. Okay, so now now that we have all of we have our templates set up. Okay, now what we do? You're going to go to your uh, transaction tab. Yeah. Go to transaction. Okay. Create a new transaction. We're going to click new transaction right here, okay? This is a buyer, and I'm going to call it buyer template one. It is residential, okay? And I want this, yeah. My templates should be... Okay, why is it? Okay, you gotta click on it. So I'm gonna do buyer template one and click save. 
Now, please understand that you are in the templates tab, and that's where you create your template for either buyer, seller, or lease. Now, you are in the transactions tab, and you're going to be able to create a transaction for loading that buyer's template into that transaction. Correct. Um, so one thing I want you to do, so it's once you're, you start the transaction, it's going to pull you into this. Okay. So it, you can see right here, the name of it, buyer template one, um, in order to get to the documents, you, um, I, I don't know why it always pulls you in here, but it does just click back to list. And then you'll have your list of, um, of transactions. Click on this. Oh, it didn't. Sorry. Oh, yeah, just, you, you click on documents. Yeah. Sorry. Documents. And then um, here you go. Here are the documents that we added. Okay. So now I'm going to put Joe Flores as my um, client. He's at one, two, three Main Street in Allen, Texas. Okay, I'm gonna put his phone number. Um, Joe at gmail.com. Okay. So, and you can see all of the other information I filled in is there. So then I'm going to click on my dates. We're going to do six months, May, June, June, July, July, August, September, October, go to October. Okay. And then there we go. So then in this first line, I'll put Joe Flores. And then um, it will show up. And there I've got all the information that I had already put in there. Um, Collin County, wire form, transform, COVID-19. Um, and then you would put in, um, and then you're good to go. Anything you want to add there, Joe? No, that's it. <clears throat> that's pretty much, you know, facilitates having those uh, fields auto populate facilitates the fact that you just have to add a couple of things in your job. Oh, right. And it saves so much time. If you take an hour to do all the template, uh, you know, and fill in the information and copy, it doesn't take you any time at all to get that done. Okay, so now, um, Okay, so we have saved and save will be grayed out if you have indeed saved it. So I'm gonna go back, okay? So now what I need to do is go into um, my command dashboard. You've gotta open that up in a new window, okay? And then you're gonna click on opportunities. Okay, and you've already taken, you know how to create um, a contact you know how to create an opportunity. Um, if I were creating a new opportunity, I would click here. You would click create opportunity. Um, Plano comes up. You would, under opportunity type, you would click buyer. And then you would select your client from here, okay? I'm gonna, to save time, I'm gonna go back and click, actually, let me see. Um, so I will do, I'm gonna click on Dave test. That's my husband. I use him as my test, okay. <coughs> um, you can do an estimated close date here, the time frame. Um, I'm just gonna put today's date. Um, budget, um, let's just put 350. Commission rate, it's a buyer, so it would be 3%. Um, and you've already got the appointment, so there you go. Um, all right, so we're going to click create. All right. Now, so then once you've created the opportunity, you're going to end up on this page where it says details, buyer profile, and documents. Okay, so you need to click on documents. Okay. 
And then, do you see this right here? This says start a transaction and it's in black. Once you have gone into this transaction a couple times, it will turn into um, this turquoise color and it will say go to transaction. So what you're gonna do right now is click start a transaction. Okay, okay. So one important thing you need to remember when you're in command, you need to make sure that you have linked your DocuSign account with your command, okay? Um, and that's a different lesson. You do that by going into your settings um, and clicking within there. So once you're hooked up to DocuSign to your, this is the DocuSign account that Keller Williams pays for. Some of us have two accounts, okay? So this should come up. Once it's linked, you click continue. Mine's automatically saved on my computer, so I'm logging in with my password. Do you see I have two accounts here? This was a paid account that I had that I no longer have. It's just considered a free account. This is my account that Keller Williams pays for. Okay, so this is the one you wanna click on because this is the one that will um, link to command. Can, can you go into command and into settings to show how to find that? Yep. So if you go into command and you click right here on this carrot, you go into settings. Um, and this pops up right here, your applications connected apps. Um, my account's connected here, okay? You can, um, you can go and connect anything that you need to connect. Just go up, just go up to DocuSign. Yeah. There you go. You just go connect, you know, click the button connect, and right. then the prompts. Correct. But I'm already connected, so we don't want to mess that up. Right. Okay. So we're back into, so once you click on a buyer and the you've created the opportunity, you end up in what they call a DocuSign room. Think of it as if you use dot loop, it's the old loop, okay? First thing you need to do is go into details and you need to make sure, I'm gonna move this over, and you need to make sure that your buyer's name and um, email are in, in the details, okay? The only, you um, click edit, all right? And then the boxes will become open and then you can make sure that their information is in there. If it's not in there, all you have to do is type it in, okay? Just make sure you <laughs> to the bottom right-hand corner and click save. Yes, Joe? Yeah, I was gonna say, on the details, you're gonna have buyer one, buyer two, uh, agent one, agent two, whatever. You can. Yeah. Apps all those all those uh, fields. Yeah. So that you yeah. only work with the fields that you need. Correct. So I normally, if I don't have a buyer two, or if it's a husband and wife, I put buyer one on one, and then the wife on buyer two, because they're yep. both going to have to be going in there to sign the document. Correct. Because you have to. Important thing to remember, and I think most of us know this: you have to have one. There has to be um, one email per person that's signing. So, okay, so back up to the top. And when, and if you're just working with buyers, if you click sellers always come first because that's what we lead with, right? Listing um, is leverage. Just click on these carrots and they'll shrink them. And you won't need the listing agent, you won't, um, but you will need the buyer. So if you shrink those down, then your buyers will pop up closer to the top, okay? All right, so now let's click back on documents. And I'm gonna scoot us back over to the side here. Um, and we need to add our document. Okay, now, so can mm -hmm. I interject? Okay, so yeah. now you're in the DocuSign room, which you know is considered the old uh, loop, dot loop or whatever it was. Um, and in DocuSign, what you're gonna need to do is you want to bring those documents from the SIP forms transaction, you wanna bring them into this room. 
Remember, you created all, you filled out all the forms and completed everything on SIF forms in the transaction that you created. Now you want to bring those documents into this room from SIF forms. Remember how we uh, said earlier, make sure you know your username and your password for SIF forms. This is actually where you need to do it. And when you enter that information, your username and your password once, you don't ever have to do it again. Correct. You have to do it for your initial one. Right. Okay. So what you're going to do um, is click on add and we're going to go over here to zip forms. And then. Obviously Kim's uh, uh, zip forms is already uh, connected to mm -hmm. the design room. So it automatically went into all of her transactions. Yeah. Her, which transaction do you want to link? So we want to link buyer one, buyer template one transaction. So we're going to click on that and click link. Okay. So now under, so then this will pop up, add forms documents. You're going to click here and you're going to click linked transaction. Okay. And you're going to hit select all. Or you can only select the ones. Remember I said earlier that you can create a template and put all the forms that you think you're going to need at any given time? Yep. Okay. Well, it's going to, since you created that transaction with that particular template, you may not be using all of them. So you go in and only select the ones that you actually need. For Perfect. instance, marriage rep agreement, um, the uh, one to four, the third party financing. Correct. Whatever you are, you're going to need. So um, the, what you're going to need here, so I'm just going to click on the buyer tenant rep agreement. Okay. So, but if you wanted to select all of them, you would sit select all. Oh, I don't know why these, I've messed something up. I'm going to have to go back and figure that out. Yeah, just click on the two. Uh, the, um, I know, I was like, there it is. Okay. So I'm clicking on the uh, residential buyer tenant rep agreement. So click do add. The I, do the I, B, uh, well. Yeah. Well, I, we can do that. Hang on. So, so that brings to a good point, Joe, that, oh, oops, I forgot to add one, right? So you go to add, click on your zip form, okay, linked transaction. I'm, it popped up to buyer tenant one, and then let me find. Passed it, IABS. Did I pass it? Yes. There it is. It's at the top. <laughs> so you. There you go. Okay, so now, um, here you go, you've got it. Let's click on it, make sure it's filled out. Now, what's so great about this is that I'm in DocuSign, but I've clicked on the document, and because they're linked, I can still add or change um, anything I need to because it's working within zip forms within DocuSign, within command, okay? So any kind of changes that you make here are automatically made on the transaction that you created on, in SIP forms. Yes, great reminder, Joe, great reminder. And vice versa. Yes, because it's linked. It's the magic of technology, okay. So here we go, and like, look here. So, oops, I forgot to put in this number, right? So then I can just go in here and put it in. All right, so I'm gonna X out of that. Save. Okay, now this will automatically save, okay? So now we need to, what we need to do is get these signed by our clients, okay? In order to do that, you have to click on this circle and sometimes you're going to hit, do you see how that Pinterest thing comes up? Just be careful. It's, I don't know why it does it. It's, that's a little frustrating. Um, but if you click on the circles, then, then you'll get this bar up here. Okay. You can copy them. You can move them. You can email them, combine them together, DocuSign them, uh, download them, archive them or unarchive them. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, okay, so what I've done here, I've selected both of them. I want to 
send them off to my buyer for signature. So I'm gonna click DocuSign. Okay, and then what it's going to do is come up with an envelope, okay? So it says, please DocuSign. So usually I name the envelope um, whatever the uh, person's name is, okay? And then um, you've got the two documents that you wanna sign and say you forgot one, you can still add it. You can still add another document. You just click, you don't have to go all the way back. You can click add um, document and it'll take you to that. Okay, here under add recipient, this is where you're going to get the people that are you need to sign. So you need to click add recipient and then you need to click pre-tagged roles. This is where you will figure out if you have added your buyer's details or not. So if you click pre-tagged roles, okay, um, we have buyer one, to, okay? And so you're gonna click buyer one, then you have to select who they are, Dave test at Gmail, and then hit add selected. Okay, and what this should do is automatically put those fields and um, add signature fields or initial fields or date fields to wherever your buyer is signed, needs to sign, okay? Obviously, um, there's, obviously there's two buyers, husband and wife, that you add recipient and you can add another one. Right. So let's let's, follow the same prompt. Um, let me click um, email address. And I'm just gonna put my name, okay? And I'm gonna put that um, I receive a copy, okay? Right. So then I'll automatically, it's going because you're the person filling out the paperwork, it automatically lets you know. But if someone like your transaction coordinator, if Joe, like I use Marsha as my transaction coordinator, oftentimes I just put Marsha on there and click receives the copy. Um, and so when it's done, it automatically goes to her. So say um, I need to add a private message. Say this is Marsha's email. Hey, Marsha, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I can do that. She will get her own private message, all right? Down here, down here is where you will send the message to all recipients. So what the email subject is, I usually put buyer rep docs. Hi, Dave. Please sign documents. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Okay. okay, so you can make whatever your message is. Obviously, you're gonna have spent time with them before they're signing documents, okay? Then you click next. Oh, Joe, talk about the numbers here. Oh, the numbers, uh, you can change the order uh, of, the, of how, who you want to sign first. Like for example, if you have a husband and wife and the wife is always the one that's taking the lead, if she's your point person, you can mm -hmm. as number one so that document goes to her first and then the husband is number two. Mm -hmm. We don't change the order of signing because it automatically is sent to both of them. And once it once one signs it, it automatically goes to the next person in line. Yeah. So, um, but you can you can if you have multiple people, you can assign the order of, of how uh, they sign, the sequence of how they sign. So and all you do is you just highlight the number and you change it. It's really simple. Okay, so after you've all these this portion, then you click next. And that should take us. Okay. <clears throat> and once you've hit the pre tagged roles, okay, did it not do that? No. Okay, it's weird. It's been doing this on my IABS and I don't know why. 
but, it, but, it, but it pre tied the buyer's wrap. It, it did. So what you can do, if, if you know something needs to be signed, you just drag and drop whatever it is you need. And then like, I make this one a little smaller. Joe laughs at me because. <laughs> I don't waste time making them smaller. Whatever size the box is, it is what it is. So see, now this one is pre-tagged already. Yeah, this one's pre-tagged already, okay? You just need to go in and double check. Just you scroll through and make sure it's there because you don't want to have to resend it again. Um, and then let me go, let me go to the very end. Okay. So here is where you would have this, the signature and the date would pop up. And you so, would also add yourself as a recipient so that you can sign this. Remember, the buyership agreement requires you to initial every single page and then sign the last page. Yes. You automatically so, add yourself as a recipient. Correct. So um, what I did is I just said I needed a copy, right? So I'm going to go back. And I haven't messed anything up. It's just taking me back to the previous screen. And I need to be like, oops, need to sign. Okay. And then change it. This is where you would change it. And then you click next. And it's going to pop right back up. Okay, so this is up here in the top left hand corner is where you can switch between people. So let me scroll all the way down and see if it did it. I don't think it added me. No, because you did not enter yourself into the details. Um, no. Well, I think because I didn't do it. I didn't add myself in the pre-tagged roles, but this is fine because yeah. this will be a lesson for people to know how to do it. Okay. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you miss the details page where you actually yeah. enter the buyer's name and, and, and email address, you're not going to be able to pre-tag their right. roles. But in this case, like Kim, like we, we forgot to do that, well, she's going to have to manually put herself in there. So she just drags. Yep. Drops that little box and drop. into and then go to the and go drop the date box. Yep. Date sign. Really? Yes. <laughs> yes. So you can adjust the box. <laughs> yes. And go then, to the page above. Yes. Okay. And see, so then you're done. So you've solved your problem, right? Nothing to freak out about. Um, and then you hit send. I always go through it a couple times. Like I always like scroll back up, double check. I've got every box there. Okay. Um, so then now we're just waiting for buyers. Let me go back and show you. Um, let me go back and show you um, what it will look like. For those of you new to this. Actually, your, your client is going to receive an email uh, with, from DocuSign and says, you know, documents have been sent to you for signature, click on the link. And yeah. then you click on the link and it'll pop up the forms with the yellow boxes and they just have to follow the prompts. Okay. So like here are, okay, I don't, that was weird. I don't, let me click on this one because I just want to show y'all um, what, when it's signed, it comes back, it'll look like all of this. It'll say it's signed. Um, I don't know, that's weird. It would not let me all the way. It's not done that to me before. Because <coughs> usually it pops me right back up into my envelopes. Okay, into my rooms. <coughs> Okay, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, okay, that's bizarre. Oh, because I'm trying to get back into... 
to your uh, DocuSign room? Yeah, it's not taking me back. It's never done this before. I don't, I don't think it's going to let you go. From no, here. I don't think it is. Okay, that's weird. Okay, hang on. There it goes. Uh, I don't know what it is doing, but it's not letting me do what I want to do. Okay. That's totally bizarre. Okay, yeah, this is new. I went back. Usually when I hit back, it takes me back into the room I just came from. And I don't know why it did that. So interesting. Okay, let me, so let me do this real quick. Let me log out. Sorry guys, let me log out. I'm gonna go back into my opportunities. Go back into my buyer. Hopefully Eddie can edit this out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, and again, I think at, at this point, I'm going to transaction. go to yeah. transaction. At this point, you, we're just going to show you that the envelope to show you that that form is waiting to be signed. Right. And then it's going to have, it's going to have the, it's going to be in yellow. Yep. Once completed, it's going to yep. turn to is going to turn into red and then there's going to be one with the icon which is blue which means that the blue yeah. is, is still a form that you can still go back and edit or use at any given time right so these are the icons joe's talking about this one's blue it's red if it's a pdf um it's yellow if it's being wait if it's um waiting on waiting to be signed and it's green if it's already signed so, um, yeah, so um, I don't think he's, so this one right here, you can see, um, so when you click on envelopes, you can see these are all the tests that, these are all the classes that we've done. Um, they're waiting to be signed, right? So here it's completed. So let me click on this. Um, and then uh, let's view documents. And that should pop open. There it goes. So then you can see it's been signed. It's been initialed. And that's what it looks like. So oh, wow, that's from a class in December. Yeah, our class in December. Yeah. So many right. classes. So many classes. So um, as always, uh, Joe, do you have anything else to add? No, I, I think that's it. I mean, that's basically think of the flow as uh, I got to have my SIF forms username and login available. You start with uh, creating your templates. From there, you create the actual transaction if it's a buyer or a listing. Mm -hmm. You command, create the opportunity, and then you are going to link that uh, opportunity into the transaction that you created in order for you to get those documents out for your for your clients to sign uh right. once they're signed that means that they're all they're all in your opportunity and i think that's i mean it's, it's a flow but it, once you do it the first time or the second time it kind of makes a lot of sense you know how you go from point a to point b and point c right and if you need um we have posted this information page this is on the facebook the, page on the kw Events facebook page um so it's there and then as always call the hotline um hang on let me find the hotline i don't know it by heart yet okay so the command hotline number is 972-645-2244 so if you have a command question, call that one. If you have a contract question, there's a contract question. 
contract hotline that you have to call. Um, but um, yeah, if y'all have questions, just reach out. We're on the Facebook page. And the document that, that Kim shared uh, that is on Facebook, it's really, really step by step. Mm -hmm. it step is. one to step 28. And it's yeah. pretty, pretty detailed. Yep. Class is being recorded so that you can just see it and hear it. But that document would also be very helpful. Yeah, the visual is there for sure. So. All right, guys. Okay, thanks, y'all. Thank you, Kim. Have a great day. You too. Talk to you soon.